Hello and once again, thank you for tuning in to the Okinawa Karate Podcast. I'm Josh Simmers coming to you from the birthplace of Karate Okinawa, Japan. It's March 10th and I thought I'd record a little podcast here to give you guys some of my amazing input and opinions about some of the news that's going around in the karate world. Um, Some things that are bouncing around the internet, Facebook, Twitter, or whatever else we use for social media. The Olympics. Karate is being turned away for the 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris. Now, I will admit that I'm one of the people that doesn't really care a whole lot about the, uh, the 2020 Summer Olympics holding karate. I think it'll be good for Okinawa. I think it'll be kind of, you know, a little up and down for sport versus tradition and whatever, this or that. Um, I'm certainly not going to go travel to Tokyo to watch it, watch it on television. I absolutely hope that if no one from America can secure a gold, which I'd be proud of, I, I certainly hope that Kuna and, and the rest of uh, Sakamoto Sensei's team does well to represent Okinawa. That'd be great. But the news came out about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks now, uh, that karate has been turned away for the 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris. They've decided not to include karate, um, as well as baseball and softball, if that breaks your heart. Uh, but since learning that karate was being added for 2020 and is not considered for 2024, I've dug a little bit about how this is even handled. I didn't realize that the host nation has quite an influence, which makes me wonder why Paris is considering breakdancing. I don't think there's any correlation there. Um, but anyway, uh, I thought I'd look this up a little bit. got me wondering, how does uh, an activity like breakdancing even get included? You know, that means there has to be these local and national and regional, I guess, world-class competitors. There must be some sort of a ranking system. Sure enough, I found out that breakdancing was already included in the Junior Olympics in 2018. So those juniors are now going to be adults, I guess we can say, by 2024. And apparently there's enough of a following. They're going to have breakdancing out there, or perhaps they're going to have breakdancing. Apparently it's not finalized. I wonder what the correct uniform is for that, though, if there's a certain, you know, bagginess to the pants. Um, they have to have, I don't know, particular breakdancing gear. have no idea about that. But according to BreakdancingNinja.com, which is a real website, I'm not making this up, breakdance is a media-coined phrase that began as breaking, or is no, also known as breaking, b-girling, or b-boying. It's a street style dance that evolved as part of the hip hop movement that originated among African American and Latin American youths in the South Bronx of New York City during the early 1970s. It is arguably the best known of all hip hop dance styles. I don't know any hip hop dance styles, so I'll take the word for it. A break dancer is also known as a breaker. Okay. Origins from street to dance. Breaking was born when street corner DJs. I guess there's a legend that DJ Cool Herc, Cool with a K, was the first person and would take the breakdown sections or breaks of dance records and string them together or loop them without any elements of the song per se. This provided a raw rhythmic bass for improvising and further mixing and allowed dancers to display their skills during the break. Hmm. You know, I was already wondering if there's going to be different groups that are like, Pro tradition break dancing from the 70s or the newer generation from this century that you know brought out some new moves or whatever. And I, I went on to read here that break dancing has a variety of influences and there is no tradition, so that kind of wipes that out. There's no tradition in break dancing, dancers pick elements from other dances in sports, including but not limited to gymnastics, capoeira. There you go. Uh, Lindy Hop, I don't even know what the heck that is, disco, etc. I need to up my dance lingo. Um, but uh, actually, all joking aside, I've had some pretty amazing uh, karate, actually masters, people I would call masters, that I know for a fact are, are, are killers on the dance floor as well. So there's, there's definitely a correlation with knowing how to use your body. And actually, uh, the karate nerd Jesse Encamp even did a video about this a few years back and said that dancing can improve your karate. He made a video uh, about the benefits of learning to pop. 
So you can go to Jesse Enkamp's page. Actually, if you go to YouTube and you just do a search right on YouTube, um, you can find it on Jesse Enkamp's page or you can type in karate to music. Rhythm exercise for Kime. K-I-M-E. And it'll bring up Jesse Enkamp's video, which is interesting. And uh, I, th I do think there's some good value in it, learning how to use your body. I'm born with two left feet, uh, so maybe I should take some of these pieces of information and run them with it myself. But anyway, I, I really don't think it's going to be a, a big deal in the Olympics. Um, I did read an article that Paris said there's only going to be 32, I think, competitors for break dancing if they do it allow if they do allow it and sounds like one of the benefits is is money that won't have to be spent because Paris said they don't have to build any new buildings or halls or event uh, locations apparently that you can just do this on the street anyway right isn't that where break dancing is supposed to be done I don't know anyway enough about that in other news definitely karate related kind of caused um, some shock waves a little bit there was discussion about the photo of Anko Itosu. And it has been re-examined. Um, I'm going to read some information directly from the OKIC.Okinawa website, the Okinawa Karate Information Center. This was first posted by Miguel Deleuze on Facebook, I think uh, probably March 5th or 6th or something like that. Um, that some information had come out, a further review was done, oh, March 1st, here we go, uh, directly from his website. Today, March 1st, the Okinawa Karate Promotion Division sponsored the Okinawa Karate Academy, uh, was held within the Okinawa Prefectural Government Building. Approximately 30 people from the karate world participated. The theme of this event, which was the third edition, was the re-examination of the Itosu Anko photo on the importance of backing up with contemporary historical documents. Um, so please go out there to the OKIC.Okinawa website. Um, this is in English. Perhaps there's a Japanese version as well. Um, but it's right there on their main page. There's a link where you can read the full text. I don't want to um, take away anything from Miguel Deleuze and the, and the folks at the OKIC. They're doing a fantastic job of documenting this information and sharing it with the masses. Continuous research. Um, that's their... That's what they're there for. That's what they're doing for us. Um, but uh, Mr. Nakamura Akira, assistant curator at the Okinawa Karate Promotion Division, was in charge of the examination. Today he announced the results of his investigation. There is a summary provided by Miguel. And he says, later on this website, we will introduce a feature article on the presentation. But the summary is, in 2006, an article titled Discovery of a photography of a legendary karate master was published in the Okinawa Times. It was an article reporting the, the discovery of a photograph of Itosu Anku, who was born in 1831, died in 1915, a man who left a huge footprint in the Okinawa history. Certainly he did. Since then, this photograph has been used widely as the photograph of Itosu Anku, and yeah, that is true. It's been used in many publications all over social media, um, hard copy print of text that a lot of people took as uh, you know hard evidence. Um, I have no skin in this game. I can't say one way or the other. I'm certainly not a researcher. I'm just a reader of the information that's put out there. Um, yet an, an examination work has been underway due to the recent uncovering of a new historical materials. In, 2000, in the 2006 photograph, Tokuda Ante is present. Tokuda Ante, A-N-T-E-I, is present. Mr. Takuda graduated in 1910 from the Okinawa Prefectural Junior High School, which later became the Okinawa Prefectural First Junior High School. Since the junior high school school at that time was a five-year system, the photo was taken between 1905 and 1910. Through research and examination of historical documents of this same period, Mr. Nakamura discovered two pictures belonging to the Shihan Gakko Normal School magazine called Ryutan, number 9, published in 1911. This document is preserved in the library of the University of Ryukus, and we are presently doing the necessary work to be able to post the pictures on this page. So stay tuned to the OKIC.Okinawa OKIC .Okinawa website, and uh, you can follow them on Facebook as well um, for those photos that hopefully will be presented to the masses here, hopefully, hopefully rather soon. 
Uh, but in the photograph, standing to the right end of the second row, the person who we thought was Itosu Anku was introduced. However, on the other pages, list of names, he is introduced as Miyake Sensei. So they go on to realize that Miyake Sensei is a man named Miyake Sango, who was born in 1847, and he was a fencing instructor of the Okinawa police. Therefore, they've concluded it is not Anku Itosu. Seems to put a wrap to it. Already I've read um, on Facebook and social media platforms where I think some people are already trying to dispute that again, but whatever, it's, you know, it is what it is um, as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I can't get grossly excited uh, about the discrepancies because we can find that we have these discrepancies in, in every piece of history um, uh, throughout throughout society. I mean, our American history, European history, there's always more information that's coming out. Um, sure, we all wish it, it was not happening from time to time, but it does. Um, undeniably, Miguel goes on here to stay, state, undeniably the search for solving this mystery will be the source of much passionate debate among karate enthusiasts. That is true. Um, presently doing the necessary work to be able to post the photos on this page. Until then, as, in, as information appears, the photos are similar to the one found on the website, the Naha City Museum of History. And if you go to the OKIC.Okinawa website, you can find that link. Um, pretty interesting information there. And then uh, Andreas Quast, who is a, an amazing researcher, um, uh, put an article up on his website, ryuku-buge.com. Ryuku-buge, B-U-G-E-I.com. Uh, followed up and posted on March 2nd a similar article, Does the Photo of Itoso Anko Show a Different Person? Now, if you don't know... Um, Andreas, I've never met him in person. I hope to here in a few months when he's on Okinawa. He read, he can read, write, and, and speak Japanese uh, fluently. However, he he takes it a step further, and he has other people, uh, other native uh, speakers, and and uh, and other uh, educated people review his documents, especially something of this caliber, before he put it out there. So he says here in his article, many thanks to Motobu Naoki Shihan of the Motobu Ryu for proofreading and corrections to his own article, to Andre's uh, article before he put it up there. Does the photo of Itoso Anko show a different person? There is a photograph showing a man considered to be Itoso Anko who has been active since the Ryuku Kingdom era and who has created the prototype of modern karate. As regards to this photograph, it was found on March 1st that there is a high possibility that the photo shows a different person. That photo was found in 2006 among the karate-related documents in the possession of a man now deceased who lived in the Kanagawa Prefecture at the time and who was a disciple of a who was a disciple of a disciple of Itosu. Since that time, the photo spread widely and came to be considered Itosu himself. Um, please go to ryuku-buge.com and read the full article. Andreas goes in to sharing the pictures that were found, um, talking more about how the uh, study was done, I guess you could say, to um, kind of disprove the the original theory. And I think one of these photos, I've, I've had conversations with Hokama Sensei here in Okinawa as well, and I think he even said he, he believed for a while that that was not Itosu because he had records that Itosu was off island at the time of this of these pictures being taken. And, you know, once again, um, I'm not the researcher. I don't have the the knowledge for doing that. I'm just uh, I'm just happy to read what other people put out, and I, I I'm not gonna lose sleep over over one way or not who who's in the picture. I think it's it's great information, and, and people should be concerned about it. Um, and and smarter people than me will will get to the bottom of it. So anyway, um, karate is not gonna be in the Olympics for 2024, and that's not the picture of Itoso Anko. So I. I I think it's pretty devastating news for the last month for Okinawa Karate, but I want to leave off on a good note. I want to help promote uh, another podcast out there. Some guys that I've not met, I, I hope to meet one day, a fellow that's in America and a fellow that's in New Zealand, um, someone by the name of John uh, and Marty. And you know what? I don't even know their last names at this point, but it doesn't matter. Um, John and Marty 
have a podcast called Karate Without Belts. And you can find this now in audio form only on YouTube. Go to YouTube and search Karate Without Belts. They have, I think, seven. Um, they call them, of course, they're called videos on YouTube, right? But it's only audio format where they talk about uh, Karate, Kobodo, what makes a master, Karate in the digital age, and much, much more. Uh, Mar Marty and John, this is directly from their website. Marty and John embark on their journey in speaking about the thing they love. We're a podcast about karate. We don't wear belts while talking about karate. And to think that it's what's in the hands, head, and hearts that matters, not what's around your waist. Um, hopefully I'll get to meet these guys one day here in Okinawa. I'd like to sit down and even do a podcast with them in person or maybe remotely. But uh, right now I'm, I'm pretty happy to, to say please go out there and listen to their podcast. I think they're doing some pretty good things. Oh, one, <laughs> one uh, thing to be aware of, if you listen to the first episode, there's this uh, maybe about I don't know halfway into it maybe it's a it's an hour if that I can't really remember but about halfway through there's this, this constant banging noise that I I literally thought was somebody punching a makiwara because it's it's in sync and it's a karate podcast I didn't know if one of these guys was punching a makiwara or if somebody was behind him doing it and the next episode John uh, let everybody know that that was his dog barking. But it's a little bit annoying in the first episode. However, the content that they're talking about outweighs the, the dog barking. Uh, it happens again, I think, in episode two, but that's all right. He's getting it under control. Um, the, the information they're putting out is well worth the dog barking. Um, of course, I'm a dog lover, so maybe that helps as well. But uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, just wanted to get out here and, and put some information out, my thoughts about this wonderful Olympic ban um, coming from 2020 into 2024 Paris doesn't really the, you know the one other thing about this I gotta say there's some amazing competitors coming out of Europe in what I'm gonna classify as what the you know sport type karate competition karate for Olympics I'm really shocked they're not having it in Paris because I think there's some amazing pe people right there in Europe perhaps right even in, in France that would be contenders but they claim that they're gonna have something more interesting uh, like break dancing. All right, that's enough of that for now. Um, as always, thank you for tuning in to the Okinawa Karate Podcast. I am Josh Simmers coming to you from the birthplace of karate, Okinawa, Japan. <laughs>